also have students meet with a peer, meet with a partner, and they have to conference. Sometimes we don't have enough time and it might just be turn and talk to the person sitting next to you and explain your strategy. But here is what we, um, what I've embedded in my class, which we call, you know, what is a part of peer feedback, but it, we call this the PQS form. And sometimes all it is is I want you to sit with your partner and you explain each other's strategies and then I want you to give your partner feedback in terms of what their next step might be. Now this takes a lot of teaching too because it, it's been weeks of practicing how to give a put up, meaning how to recognize what your partner's doing really well. So we practice just doing that. I like how you decompose that 224. I like how organized your work was. And so we practice doing that and then we go on and practice how to ask our partners questions and then how to give that suggestion. But even with written feedback, a way to support your English language learner, support language learning, is to give students those sentence stems, to give them those sentence starters. You're not framing it for them. It's not a closed sentence where they're just filling in the blanks, but you're helping them get started. And for some students who, earlier I heard, how can we engage our students who are just reluctant to sharing even with a partner because they don't feel uh, comfortable with the language? Well, if they have a sentence starter, just something to help them engage and initiate that conversation, it, it helps. So for the put up, I like, I agree with, I was surprised when, uh, ways that they can ask a question. What did you mean when? I didn't understand. And the same thing with the suggestion. I wonder if, or next time you could try. So this one particular partnership, um, right. So the, the put up was, I like how you tried your best to get the answer right, but it was a little topsy turvy. And the question, how do you know that's the right answer? The suggestion, next time you could try and read the problem carefully. Now, again, these are first, second graders. And although I really wanted to sometimes be very specific about the math, you know, I have to understand in terms of their developmental level. So sometimes it becomes very, you know, very, um, just like this one example. But what she was trying to get is, you know, her partner's strategy was just all over the place. And it was the wrong answer. So she didn't want to say you have the wrong answer, but her question was, how do you know that answer is right? And you know, the suggestion, next time you could try reading the problem carefully, you know, and, and so just a nice way of putting it, right? I mean, go back and check your work. But uh, again, it gives them that opportunity to engage in that type of conversation where they're giving each other feedback. And you know, they become very open to it. This is what I was saying earlier about how sometimes they're a lot more open to the feedback that their peers give them than sometimes what the teacher has to suggest as a next step. You have to give students opportunities to engage in giving each other feedback and having it just be orally. Uh, you gain so much from it just having it be an oral discussion that they're having. And many times it has to do with, you know, developmentally how they are when it comes to their writing. And sometimes their writing can be a lot more limited than their, their speaking skills. So you have to make sure, or I make sure that I give my students both opportunities. Sometimes it's written and sometimes it's really, you know, unpacking their work. Again, sometimes depending on what the learning goal is, it's math related or just the content and sometimes I'm just looking for language. How is the explanation going? So what we, you know, what we've tried to do to help our students is that when you're sitting with a partner, you're sitting knee to knee, what we say is, what is it? Heart, uh, knee to knee, heart to heart, eye to eye. And so it's become sort of our ritual routine because what we were happening is, like, what we were noticing is exactly that. You know, it's how can you show your partner that you're even engaged in whatever it is that your partner has to say to you? But um, you know, going back to, to this partnership, you notice that her feedback to her, to her partner had nothing to do with the math other than how you know, well it was organized, but it was all in the explanation. And she said, you know, if the explanation would be, you know, just you know, really thinking about using first I, then I, suddenly. So those connectors, she felt it would have been a lot more organized in terms of trying to, you know, match what you're saying to your strategy if you would have tried using, you know, some different connectors there instead of then I and then. And you can see where he tried, he would pause, but she wanted to reiterate and say, you know, it would really help if you do that. So some conferences, again, are related to the content and sometimes it's, um, 
again, language that we're focusing on. Some students will actually read what they have, what they've written, and have that be their you know, oral explanation. And sometimes what I have to do to remind them, it's like, okay, but I want to hear from you. So you tell me you know, about your strategy. Uh, because sometimes, again, the writing can be pretty limited. So it's how can we really clearly assess where students are in terms of their language use.